it doesn't matter what incubator you're using or which egg you're hatching out. These are some of the most basic instructions that will help guide you on how to set up your incubator for hatching eggs. Hello and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Today I'm going to teach you how to set up your incubator for hatching eggs. Today I'm going to be setting up our brand new incubator that we received as a gift from one of our subscribers off of our wish list. We have had Hovabator incubators for probably 10 years now and we have two of them that we've been using for all this time and just recently they started to malfunction just a little bit enough that we were starting to have a lower and lower hatch rate so I knew it was time for us to upgrade and when that time came I knew that I could trust this brand because it had lasted us so long that I didn't need to worry about finding a new brand of incubator that would work for us and I also like the fact that the Hovabator incubators are a much higher volume of eggs that you can hatch at a time for a much lower price. Now I'm not being sponsored in any way by Hoverbaiter, but hey, if you want to, you know, you can send me my email at wholesomerootsblog at gmail.com. But these have proven to stand the test of time for me as a customer. So I knew that stepping up to a circulated air incubator with a digital readout was going to be a game changer. And I'm so excited to get started in my incubation journey with this new incubator. It doesn't matter what incubator you're using or which egg you're hatching out. These are some of the most basic instructions that will help guide you on how to set up your incubator for hatching eggs. Today, we are going to be hatching our quail eggs. We just received some Celadon blue quail eggs. I had to bring them outside to show you guys in the natural lighting how beautiful these fertile quail eggs are. These are celadon quail eggs. They naturally lay a blue egg. I've had celadon quail in my covey for a few years now, but only a couple of them had laid this really true blue. Now, my covey will be predominantly Celadon True Blue. And this is, I believe he said third generation, fourth generation of being selected as only the blue egg layers. And look at the size of that one. Now granted, it's the biggest one in the tray, but that right there is what I'm going to be aiming for in my breeding program. I'm gonna go for the jumbo sizes with the True Blue colors. These beautiful eggs came from Peach Creek Game Birds in Texas. This packing is wonderful. I've heard lots of good things about their fertility and I'm really excited to see how these eggs go for us. We're going to let them rest after the shipping has jostled them, let them redevelop their air cell in the proper location on the top of the fat end of the egg. And then we are going to put them into our new incubator that should be arriving today as a gift from a wonderful subscriber off of our wish list. So my plan was to hatch out my own quail from my own cubby, but after adding them in with the rooster, they completely stopped laying all eggs. And I've watched his activity and he's a little bit too aggressive. So we are actually gonna cull him and go through the cubby and decide which ones are the best ones to keep for breeding to keep a few different egg layers going we will hold on to some of our old cubby what we'll probably do is take one of the roos that hatches out of this batch and put it in with the other cubby it's important to keep in mind that if you have received shipping eggs, you're gonna to wanna to let them rest for a day or two so that the air cell can realign itself to the top of the egg at the fat end. 
If you're collecting eggs from your backyard flock, you're going to want to choose your clean, uncracked eggs. It's a good idea to go ahead and candle those eggs ahead of time to make sure there's no cracks. Or you may have purchased some eggs locally or received some eggs from a friend. So just go ahead and make sure that you let them rest for a period of time with the fat end of the egg up so that they're ready to go in the incubator. First thing you want to do is turn the incubator on and let it get up to temperature. This incubator is pre-programmed to raise its temperature up to 100 degrees and maintain that temperature. I don't have to push any buttons unless I need to adjust and I'm going to go down a little bit to 99.5. Now this incubator is automatic, so it will drop its temperature to 99.5 and it will maintain that temperature for the duration of the hatch. Man, y'all, this thing's awesome. I had the lid off because I was installing the quail rack and I forgot to put it back on and it let me know that my temperature was too low. I was like, what's that sound? It is also important that you set up your incubator in a regulated temperature area with no drafts. If you have wind blowing across from a window or a door on a regular basis, it could cause more fluctuation in the temperature than you're wanting to have. So find a spot where they're not gonna be disturbed. Nobody's gonna need to move them to do something. For me, that means my work table, which is often kind of a clutter table. So it works out pretty well for me to have it full of incubators this time of year. So after an hour or so, your temperature should be set up pretty good. Sometimes it's best to let it wait 24 hours to make sure that it's gonna maintain that temperature properly. And then you're gonna wanna add some liquid if your humidity inside the incubator is below 35%. You're gonna need to check a hydrometer to see what the humidity in your incubator is. Bring the humidity up to around 40%. It's gonna be slightly different for certain breeds, and it's gonna be slightly different for different incubators. So make sure that you follow your manufacturer's instructions on how to do this and make sure you know what that breed entails. So once you have your eggs picked out and your incubator brought up to the proper temperature and humidity, it's time to start adding your eggs. But before you do so, you need to decide how are you gonna turn these eggs? Cause they will need to be turned three to five times a day throughout the duration of the hatch. This can be done by hand, and you can mark one side of the egg with an X so that you know if it's been turned or not, and do it manually. Or you can get an egg turner. We got this quail egg turner and a chicken egg turner for our new incubator, and it's gonna work so nice that I don't have to go in there every day and fluctuate the temperature and humidity by tampering with the eggs by rolling them around myself. Turning the eggs is a pretty important step as a mother hen that's sitting on a nest of eggs does not sit still the entire time. She moves them around the whole time they're hatching and it's important for them to have movement. Always make sure to handle your eggs with perfectly clean hands. Everything, all of the equipment should be sanitized in between use to make sure that you don't introduce any bacteria to these porous shells that could receive that bacteria and damage the babies inside. So now I'm ready to begin putting my hatching eggs into the incubator. Depending on what type of turner you have, some of them lay on their side like this one and others are placed into the egg turner with the fat side up. I squeezed a little too hard on one so they all arrived not cracked but I broke one so remember to be very careful once you have your eggs in the incubator the rest is pretty simple from here the incubator is going to take care of the rest especially if you have an egg turner that automatically turns your eggs for you there are different stages of development that you can see if you candle the eggs at a certain stage of development for a quail egg, it would be about three days. For a chicken egg, it's better to look around the seven day mark. I have a video, I'll leave a link to it over here. And you can check out how to candle the day seven incubation. 
So then for quail eggs, I know that it takes 18 days for those to hatch, but they often start hatching on the 17th day. So what I'm going to do is make sure that three days before the hatch begins, I turn off the egg turner. You want to stop turning your eggs at the 18 day mark on chickens and about the 15 day mark on quail. For locking down your incubator, you're no longer going to go in and check it. You're no longer going to add any water to raise the humidity. So this is the perfect time for you to fill up any of the troughs in the bottom of your incubator that need to be filled in order to increase the humidity. You're going to want to do this at lockdown so that it will be the proper humidity for hatching so you won't end up with any shrink wrapped eggs. For more details on lockdown and day 18 candling of chicken eggs, check out this video. So once your eggs begin to hatch, it can be a very exciting time for everyone. The kids and mom alike are gonna wanna be checking in that incubator constantly, but try to make sure that you just use the viewing window and do not open the incubator during lockdown or hatching, or you could cause shrink wrap. So leave it undisturbed, check the temperature and humidity, make sure it is okay, and that is it. When they hatch, they have up to 48 hours of food stored in their bodies from absorbing the yolk at the end of the hatch. So don't feel like you have to go in and take them out and put them in and give them food. You wait until they're nice and fluffy and dried off, and then you can move them to your brooder where you can supply them with food and water. If you're interested on how to take care of day-old quail chicks, Watch this video. Most of the tips and advice I give in that video will work for pretty much all of the poultry breeds. Once all the eggs have hatched and it has been 48 hours and you're not seeing any others hatching, this is when you're gonna wanna go ahead and take your babies and put them into a brooder where you're gonna provide warmth, food, and water. And then your incubator still needs a little bit more attention. There may be some eggs that didn't hatch. Sadly, you will need to dispose of those in your compost. Then you're going to want to clean all of the surfaces inside of your incubator and make sure that you sanitize them correctly so that no bacteria will be left for your next hatching. I hope that this has helped you and that you've learned something new in this hatching video on how to set up your incubator for hatching eggs. If you're interested in more quail videos, check out my quail playlist and see what other quail videos we have and also our incubator series. Make sure you check out the description down below if you're interested in purchasing any of these products. I will have the Amazon links. I am an Amazon affiliate, so every purchase you use using our Amazon links helps our channel grow. Thank you for watching Wholesome Roots. We'll see you next time.